Normally at this time of year, we would be somewhere a little more exotic than a hotel car park, but we would be in a hotel, probably in Europe somewhere, because it's motor show season and we'd be looking at all of the new metals. So we'd probably be at a motor show. The car behind me would probably be on some sort of carousel and we'd be fighting our way through a sea of people. Instead, we can't really go anywhere. We can't really drive too far either. So we're doing our best to show you what we'd be normally showing you from overseas right here at home in Australia. And behind me is the new Kia Sportage. We're gonna take a closer look at it in a moment, but in the flesh and straight off the bat, this is a beautiful looking medium SUV. I reckon Kia has absolutely hit the nail on the head with this new design. Let's have a look at it now. Key highlights of the new Sportage are undoubtedly headlined by the Australian tuned suspension system, which if previous iterations are anything to go by, once again promises to position the Sportage at the pointy end of the segment in a driving sense. Sportage also gets advanced safety inclusions as you'd expect and is based on new architecture underneath. Key to the cabin comfort is an elongated wheelbase up to 2,755 millimetres, which results in an 80 millimetre increase in second row legroom and a 7 millimetre increase in second row headroom. This is a really premium cabin, there's no two ways about it, and I love the way that Kia has executed both the design and the ergonomics. Now, these two screens at the front, it's amazing how quickly stuff that you might see in vastly more expensive vehicles trickles down into more affordable vehicles. You've got huge 12.3 inch screens, not one but two of them, one for the driver, one for the sat nav and all the infotainment. I love the way these digital controls through the center of the dashboard switch between your air conditioning controls and then through to all the infotainment controls. So you just hit a button there and the whole screen changes and what the dials do changes as well. It's really brilliant and it's simple and I think the most important part of that is what it's allowed Kia to do is clean up that section of the console because you don't need two lots of switches and dials. Uh, this is what would be the top spec GT line so you've got heated and cooled seats, leather trim, massive sunroof. It's just a really well executed cabin. It's going to be a comfortable place to spend some time even on longer drives and we're really looking forward to testing this out on the open road. Across the various S SX, SX Plus and GT line trim grades, a 115 kilowatt, 192 newton meter, two litre petrol engine, a 132 kilowatt, 265 newton meter, 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol engine, and a 137 kilowatt, 416 newton meter, two litre diesel engine will be available. Australian pricing will be announced closer to the local launch in October and we can't wait to sample the new Sportage on Australian roads. The current Sportage ranges from just over $30,000 to around $50,000 for the range topper before on-road costs. Expect the new Sportage to creep up slightly from those prices. Well, we've said it for some time, but we have been fans of Kia's design and the way they put an exterior styling package together. And I think that new Sportage is absolutely no different. I think that exterior styling is bang on. It's one of the highlights for me, along with the cabin ergonomics, and I think they've got the spec inclusions and the spec grades, I guess you could say, spot on as well. I really think it's a good package. The other benefit that it's worth mentioning, and, and we're looking forward to testing it once we get it into the drive garage, is the Australian tuned suspension system. Kia has been doing that for some time. It's a real benefit for them, and it provides that sort of added inclusion to a vehicle that not every manufacturer has, and it ensures that it's absolutely perfect for our conditions. So we're really looking forward to testing that. Now, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Do you love the styling? What do you think about where they're positioning in the market? And don't forget that the news story relating to this is live on drive.com.au and so will be any of the updates on pricing and availability. And of course, the first Australian drive when it launches in Australia.